What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. I am known in the industry as a trash elf. I professionally sell junk. And today I wanna to talk about um, something that I've been working on for a long time. This is called reverse logistics. So essentially, when you go on a website and buy something and you order it from them, a lot of these companies don't do any of their own logistics, meaning you buy an item from, let's say this company Chubby's, they sell shorts. When you buy from them, a third party accepts the order and ships the order out to the customer. Now, Chubby's is more like of a marketing company. They are just selling shorts basically by making a beautiful website, hiring models, designing goods, having them made in China, but essentially, they go to a 3PL, which is like a third party company that does the logistics for them. Now, this is kind of weird because it's like the very, very end of the retail cycle, meaning a customer has bought these items from the website already. They didn't like them, either it was not a good fit or they tried it for a couple of days and didn't like it, and they sent it back to the company as a return. So this company that I use to buy these returns is called Happy Returns, and they are a reverse logistics company, meaning returns go to them and they process it. So companies like Happy Returns or other companies, I'm not sponsored by them, it's just a random company that I work with. And I think PayPal might own them, but essentially they handle the returns for this company. So when somebody doesn't like it, they send it to this company called Happy Returns, they aggregate all of the returns. And in this scenario, there's like tens of thousands of these items that have been returned and then they auction them to the highest bidder. In this scenario, I actually ended up buying these returns. So reverse logistics is very interesting. It's the very, very end of the retail cycle. Now, I have bought this company's junk. They got rid of these items. And if you guys have ever bought something on Amazon and tried to return it, it might say, just keep it or you can have a refund back and donate it because they don't actually want to deal with the reverse logistics and having the item go back to a warehouse to be inspected. Now, it's interesting because in all of these returns, from my experience, about 1% of it will be fraudulent. So here, let's say there's 10,000 items in this room, about 100 of them, somebody will return a rock or some magazines instead of the actual item. But in my experience, the fraud's not actually that high. Not that many people are these bad actors but these companies anyway, this is essentially their death pile, their junk, and they wanna get rid of it. They wanna get it off the books because storing it in a facility like this is very expensive for these companies, and they're not resellers, they're retailers. So in the next upcoming years, I actually feel like this type of business where you're reselling the junk of companies is gonna become bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you start out as a reseller, you sell your own junk, and then you move on to selling other people's junk at Goodwill, thrift stores, garage sales, flea markets, but then after that, you start working with companies and you start selling their junk. So this is very interesting. What I'm doing right now in this room is I'm actually sorting all this stuff by size and condition. So we're gonna look through all 10,000 of these items and determine the condition. If the items don't meet our quality standards, they'll be donated or destroyed. And if they do meet our quality standards, they'll be sorted by size and style so that I can stream them. Also, some of these items are good enough that they're gonna meet my $35 and over um, metric and I'm going to post those on Poshmark. My reseller closet is called Reseller Nirvana and in that store I only have items that I make a $20 profit or higher which is what I recommend for people who start selling their own junk or for selling the junk of other people. $20 profit is a really really nice place to be in because most people do not ever list more than 10 items a day. So 10 items a day times $20 profit is still a great business. One thing I do want to talk about today though is that I call $20 and over profit a senior reselling level. Like you're pretty good at it. Under $20 profit, I consider a junior level reseller, meaning you're just selling items that you buy for either under $5 or under $10 or you get for free or $2 paid by the pound, sell for $10 or more plus shipping. You're making a good profit, but not a $20 profit. That's completely fine, but it's a lot more processing, meaning you're selling a lot more of that stuff to make a profit, which is completely fine but you have to be a processing expert. So this level of reselling where you're selling commercial junk, it really is a processing game because there's just so much of it. The quantity is so staggering that at this point, I'm like looking at spaces that are 25,000 square feet, 50,000 square feet, just to hold stuff that even, even though I'm trying to move it in three months or less, just the sheer quantity of what businesses throw out is literally mind blowing and about 90% of this stuff used to end up in landfills, but because it's now illegal to destroy goods in a lot of countries, 
they're not destroying it anymore. They're using third-party logistics companies to discard it. And that's where I come in. So hopefully this is interesting, guys. I'm gonna be going through lots of these different kinds of buys and how to process them in the future. So until next time, make progress daily.